Welcome back, everybody, to These Aren't the Nerds You're Looking For. Lorenzo Papon here, sitting with Kevin Horde. How are you doing, man? It's a beautiful day. Uh, Disney. Is it? Disney Now, Disney Channel, Disney Plus, Disney something, whatever. It's not Disney Plus, that's for sure. <laughs> it's not Disney Plus, not yet. Uh, yeah. Whatever whatever the app is that I use to watch this show finally decided to let me watch it. So, Right. There we go. Yeah, there there was a delay that I did not notice because the Oscars were on yesterday. So yeah, I've been uh, frantically trying to watch this since uh, yesterday morning. So a good thirty six hours ago. Yeah, and you know, yeah, I just like to make you wait. Apparently, uh, the yeah, the episode we were waiting for was uh, Star Wars Resistance: The Disappeared, and we will find out later whether or not it was worth the wait. <laughs> we will see. Uh, but as always, first, we like to do just a quick summary of the episode. Uh, that said, if you have not seen the episode, again, that's The Disappeared. I will be discussing the entire episode, so spoilers abound. Uh, that has been your warning. I'm jumping in the summary now. You ready? I am ready. Awesome. So we start during a race uh, on the Colossus. Pyre hollow calls into Doza and mentions that races pose a security threat. Uh, Doza says that they are necessary to the well-being of the citizens of the Colossus and that they should continue. Uh, we cut over to Tam, Niku, and Kaz at Aunt Z. Uh, Niku mentions that there's an Aces Run sort of event where they can participate and potentially become Aces themselves. However, stormtroopers arrive and they want to post propaganda for recruits to the First Order at Aunt Z's. She has some objections to it, but they do force her to post. Uh, it's like a hollow poster sort of thing. Uh, we cut back to Doza's office where Pyre himself in person shows up and uh, basically gives Doza the order to cancel all the races. Uh, all aces must stand down. And that the First Order will take over all security on the for, uh, the Colossus. Uh, Hype. Uh, all the Aces are informed of this uh, grounding. And Hype in anger goes to a ship where troops are putting a boot on it, essentially. Uh, he says a few not kind remarks to the First Order. And uh, we then cut over to Tam and Kaz in another argument about the First Order. Uh, they're basically having a similar argument to what we have seen them getting uh, into over the last handful of episodes. Uh, Kaz feels that the First Order needs to go away, and Tam believes that they are, in fact, doing good on the Colossus since there have been no pirate attacks. Uh, but Kaz mentions that they will not be able to do anything with the First Order occupying the Colossus. Uh, Tora Doza enters the uh, bar and she mentions that they can she cannot find hype phase on um, aunt Z over here and blames the first order and mentions that the first order tends to make people disappear people that are disagreeable to the first order uh, there's a little uh, roller droid that overhears aunt Z say this rolls away comes back with a couple of stormtroopers uh, they come to uh, check on the report of a disturbance. Uh, Hype Faison gets mentioned, and th the fact that he's gone is mentioned. Um, a troop uh, trooper kindly calls in and checks on the citizen, and it is claimed that he had clearance to leave and promptly left. Uh, Tora mentions that she, he wouldn't do that without saying goodbye to her. However, Tam thanks the stormtrooper for the information that is given to them. Uh, Aunt Z does not believe them and kicks them out of the bar uh, even throws the hollow poster back at the troops uh, Tora asks Kaz to help find Hype uh, They the plan is to go to the tower to check on the ship uh, if the ship is still there then there, uh, there's no way that Hype would have left without a ship uh, so Tora and Kaz do sneak into the tower and confirm that Hype's ship is in fact still there uh, we head back to Aunt Z's bar, and Aunt Z herself now is missing. Uh, we then promptly see that Hype and Aunt Z are 
in a shipping container. They are trapped in there with two other citizens of the Colossus. Um, a stormtrooper outside mentions that they are to be shipped away. Uh, Kaz and Tora go talk to Yeager to try and uh, figure out what's going on with the Colossus. Uh, Yeager does not want to be disturbed, but as Kaz is knocking on his door, the door opens. Uh, Kaz falls in. Tora follows, as does CB-23. And they find Yeager in there chatting with Captain Doza. Uh, Yeager does want to take down communications blanket to try and contact the resistance and inform them of what's going on. Uh, Captain Doza does mention that the First Order is in fact shipping people off of the Colossus. And that they will be found in the West Dock. Uh, Kaz mentions that they must act now before their friends disappear. And Yeager gives them the blessing to go handle that situation. Uh, as Kaz leaves Yeager's office, Tam asks what happened in there. Uh, Kaz hides from her the truth and kind of claims this party is happening. So basically just still hiding the truth from Tam. Uh, Kaz, Tora, and CB all sneak to the docks. Uh, they find the container with Z and Hype. Uh, they decide not to break them out of the shipping container because it will only create suspicion and alarm among the stormtroopers and that they need to be brought to the transport by the stormtroopers and then they will steal the transport itself uh, and escape that way. Uh, there's a little fight that breaks out when Aunt Z and Hype and the other two are indeed brought to the uh, transport. Uh, and so through the little fight, uh, Hype, Aunt Z, Tora, and Kaz all fight stormtroopers and they do dispose of all of them. And then Hype agrees to fly the transport away. Uh, trying to decide where to go, Aunt Z does suggest going to Takodana and that she does have a friend there. Uh, we cut back to Yeager's. Kaz is headed back after the fun event of the evening. And Kaz finds the uh, crew, that is Tam, Niku, and Yeager, all surrounded by Captain Pyre, Commander Pyre, and his uh, stormtroopers. And Commander Pyre places them under arrest. And then we cue fanfare. Cue fanfare. Well done. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> this was uh, definitely a more uh filled episode shall we say so uh where do you want to start with this one i feel like there's a lot to talk about here yeah um let's start uh, number one let's mention really quickly the director is sergio paez and the writer is stephen melching is what i got great um uh, let's start with this, this idea that the races pose a security threat. Okay. Uh, this is just First Order baloney, correct? This is just a way for First Order to take control over security situation on the Colossus? Yeah, I wasn't really sure why, um, what the the logical standpoint behind this is. Um, mm -hmm. I do feel like... Commander Pyre probably has some sort of logistic backing behind this, but I don't know what it is. Like, yeah, I'm kind of assuming that um, with the aces out of commission, it just kind of gives the first order free reign to handle security how they see fit without the potential of opposition. And I totally agree with that, but I feel like he would have to give Doza some sort of ex explanation as to why it's a security risk, as opposed to it's a security risk. But maybe not, because um, like you said, Pyre Hollow comes in, says, hey, mm -hmm. the races are going to have to stop. It's a security risk. And Doza's like, well, it's basically the only thing that uh, the people have to look forward to, so we're going to keep doing it. And Pyre says, yeah, for now. And then, you know, two scenes later, Pyre's there right. in person and basically repeats himself. Completely. Yeah. So yeah, we don't we don't get an explanation and I'm I'm not sure this part will be explained, honestly. You know. I don't um, I don't think it will either. 
Yeah, I think it was kind of a means to get hype and potentially Aunt Z off planet for whatever reason. Uh, well, I mean, I don't think. They, do you think they were targeted then? Is that what you're saying? No, it was just like the writers needed some characters to disappear. Disappear, right? Hmm. And they kind of just picked two characters that we sort of cared about and then kind of back engineered it from there. Right. Okay. So it's like if, you know, like perhaps they saw that they wouldn't be using hype anywhere in the near future Mm -hmm. or at Z. So they're like, well, like what if we had the races grounded and that's why hype gets like arrested because he gets angry. Right. Yeah, so as soon as I realized that I was completely incorrect, that it was uh, the children from Tehar, uh, which is what I presumed last week. Although we did have a Tehar reference that we didn't pick up on last week. Right, yeah. And that was, um, just to cover that real quick, the symbol at the temple was the same symbol um, that Kel had on his bracelet. Mm-hmm. Or wrist guard, yep. whatever you want to call it. Anyway, right. uh, to the disappeared, um, I quickly figured out that it didn't have anything to do with them. And uh, so then, really, for most of the episode, I was like, oh, shit. Like, who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? And um, I was surprised that it was hype. And then when Aunt Z starts running her mouth, I was like, eh, she's going to be one of them. Right. <laughs> uh, the little blue dude from the first episode, the recruit that got right. into it with Kaz, didn't know that was going to happen. wasn't wasn't too too taken aback by that one. Uh, and then there right. is a snaggletooth guy. Mm-hmm. Doesn't speak. So just there, just kind of grunts at most. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I don't think there's like a voice actor credit for him. So. I yeah, wasn't I able to pick constantly. up. Yeah, I, well, I mean, I don't know what his name is anyway. That's right, that's yeah. usually what I do is like if I'm, if I'm unsure of what a character is, I look at the cast list at the end, uh-huh. and you can generally pick up uh, who somebody is by their name is listed in the voice actor credits. Right? That mm-hmm. didn't that didn't work for this guy for me. So uh, <laughs> could have slipped through the cracks. Don't know, but uh, uh, kind of an obligatory uh, extra fourth person in the shipping container. Um, I wanted to talk about the the whole first order coming in and uh, the initial confrontation with Aunt, Aunt Z and the mm-hmm. first order, right? Uh, so we got this little uh, BB unit rolling around. And everybody is kind of speaking freely around this droid. Okay. Right. Uh, Aunt Z clearly gives zero fucks about anything. She makes this yep. abundantly clear in the entire episode. And at one point she says, I will say what I want, when I want, as loud as I want, and no one is going to fucking stop me. Mm-hmm. This is admirable. Congratulations, Definitely. Aunt Z. Very nice. Right. Well done. Um But in the context of the conversation that's going on at that time, like Kaz is pretty paranoid and thinks that, you know, the First Order is tightening their iron fist, right, on the Colossus Mm -hmm. and expresses himself pretty explicitly. Um, But I feel like he knows the droids there and he should have been a little bit more careful with the way that that he was talking like if he truly thinks that uh that the first order is spying on people right Mm -hmm. to do ill right that he probably would be like nope not talking about the first order right now because first order droids like right over there eavesdropping (laughs) i mean clearly uh you know we got an agent of of uh secrecy of the first order in that droid (laughs) Right there, yeah, checking up on us. Uh, but that little droid is in a hole. Uh, he just kind of rolls around and has that persona of 
Uh, I'm the big guy in the room and I can do what I want, even though he's, you know, a foot and a half tall. Because uh, he'll just, like, doesn't divert his path at all. Goes where he's going, runs into whoever's there. And when they even just look at him awry, he whips out his little lighter fire finger shock torch thing. Mm-hmm. And for the most part, everybody's like, oh, whoa, 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 my bad, my bad. I'll back up. I'll leave you alone. <laughs> what yeah. do we got um, next? What, yeah, do you have anything more to say about this Kaz and Tam argument that they have right then and there? I mean, we've kind of covered this ground before, and personally, I don't think they've made any further progress in this argument but i i didn't know if you wanted to make more note of it at all i feel like it gets brought up again it's becoming harder and harder to sympathize with tam's point of view um right because like i mean i can totally get it she had a plausible argument in the beginning but Mm -hmm. um as it progresses I don't know. She doesn't even come off as stubborn. Like, she just comes off as uneducated, right? And Completely, yeah. Up until this, up until this point, as other than this particular situation, she seems like an educated young lady, and uh, she's, you know, she seems like a great mechanic. She's a good pilot, I think. I don't know that we ever see her actually pilot though, but <laughs> right. you know, she's kind of rebuilding the fireball and um, you know, hot rodding it out and whatever. And it seems like she's been working with Yeager for a while and she's good at her job. And um, socially she's, she's kind of with her peers on hanging out and, and doing, doing the thing of the Colossus and whatever. Mm-hmm. But for this one thing, she's just like so set in her ways and it's it's past being stubborn. It's past being, uh, I don't even know. I don't, like. I don't. I'm not gonna lie. In my notes, I called her a deplorable. Okay. That's exactly what I called her. This, to, the show is creating such broad strokes at this point where the first order is literally making people disappear. Mm-hmm. They're literally making Aunt Z put up propaganda. Mm-hmm. And then Tam, to me, is a attendee of a Trump rally is essentially what I'm comparing her to. Okay. Right. So just to get as overtly political as possible, like that's completely what I'm seeing her character representing. Okay. Is this weird person who in the face of infinite evidence Mm -hmm. is just like no but the net positive is what's important yeah and Kaz is like no 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 no. like there is no net positive Uh, I really like Niku's character here um, because he is like the he's like the fucking ping pong ball right Uh, right and he's not necessarily a voice of reason. He's just a voice of logic, right? She says, oh, well, you know, the platform has never been safer. And he was like, oh, this is true. There's no pirate attacks. Like, these things aren't happening. Um, there's food, fuel, jobs, whatever. And mm-hmm. Kaz goes, yeah, that's great, but we have, like, zero freedom at all. Like, there's just this crushing thumb hanging over us and eventually we're going to have like we're not going to be able to go anywhere or do anything and we're essentially held hostage and Niku is just like these things are also true right like I really really liked Niku in this episode see my only problem there is does Niku actually hold his own opinion at all because like he's essentially just parroting back what they're both saying. And to me, it was just, uh, I I was trying to figure out if he was forming an opinion at all. He sort of did before. I think in previous episodes, I think he is a strict, um, 
literal being. Okay. Right. So like when, when Tam says, Oh, these things about the first order, he's like, those things are true. And Kaz is like, well, what about these things? And he's like, yeah, well, those are also true. So I don't think that he thinks, I don't think Niku thinks about the first order in any particular way. He's just like, these people are here. They said they were going to do this thing. That's what they're doing. And he just kind of goes about his day to day life. And if uh, Niku is not a person that would feel oppressed, right? Niku is a person that would continue doing his thing until there is like a 100% like shutdown of him not being able to do his thing. Mm -hmm. That's the way that I see his character. Yeah. Uh, And I understand that it's just, it's just weird that this is uh, the way you bring up that he's a logical being is interesting. I haven't fully thought of him that way yet. Like not in that explicit term per se, He's definitely always just kind of been surface level. He kind of takes everything at face value, right? Mm-hmm. But it's now that we're this far into the first order occupation, like the kind of the lack of, I don't know, like ethical and moral quandary. Responsib- yeah. Yeah. Um, It'll be interesting to see Niku's character next week, right? Right. the the mm-hmm. whole The whole crew's been arrested, so right. to see how he responds to that, and honestly, to see how Tam responds to that, and I think that Tam is going to be like, "Oh, there must be a mistake," and I think that Niku's like, "No, we've been we've been talking bad about the First Order. These are the things that happen. No wonder right. we're in prison." You know, and I don't think that he like, you know, he'll take it in stride. It's like, okay, another thing. This is what we did. So this is what happened, you know, and he's going to just make the best of it and move forward with whatever he needs to do to make the best of the situation. Mm -hmm. You could call him naive. That may be. But he also seems experienced in the fact that um, when he thinks about this stuff, it's like. Okay, you know, it's just for him. It's like I don't even know if it's like black and white. It just is what it is, and right, and yeah, you accept it and you move forward. Okay, all right. That's the way that I see him, and I really like that about him. I th- okay. like that's one of my favorite things about his character. Yeah. Um, Do you think Tam will have a change of heart next week? I don't. Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> Honestly. I will um, be uh I will be surprised if she does. Um Yeah. Okay. Going back to uh how you were talking about Tam's character being a uh Trump rallyan, okay? Right. Yeah. The person that I truly expected to be that uh-huh. to be that personification in a character would have been Griff Holleron. He's the uh He's one of the aces. He flies the the black ship. He's the right. he's the ex Imperial Tie Fighter pilot. And I expected mm-hmm. when Doza came in and said, "Hey, the First Order shut us down." Like Griff to be like, "Of course they did. Like that's what they're here to do." That's because it seems like um, to be an ex Tie Fighter pilot, like I would assume that you would have to buy into like some of what the empire was all about Mm -hmm. you had to support that to get like that far into the empire right right and then to be able to i guess retire from that did like he just completely change his ways because he definitely has not one but two imperial cog tattoos right right so Mm -hmm. at some point he embraced all of this and it's not like there's scarred up or crossed out or anything so i feel like he still has some attachment to like the old empire so Mm -hmm. that tells me that he would not necessarily support the first order but understand what they're doing does that make sense right yeah yeah i get that yeah so yeah not like a full sympathizer but just like 
I get it. I know what this is. I know the process. Mm-hmm. Right. You know. Totally get it. I'm going to stand back yeah. and let it happen because I know what the Empire was was capable of doing, and the First Order is growing in strength, so I'm not going to support them, but I'm not going to stand their way. Right. Exactly. Like, I'm just here to live my life. Right. Uh, I did think it was interesting that we do... I feel like for the first time, uh, mm-hmm. we've got we've got all five aces together, and not only that, but we have like all of them have like a, a speaking part in the same right. scene, which I thought yeah. was nice. Yeah, because we don't definitely don't see that mm-hmm. for all the talk and celebrity status that the aces have. We don't really see them too much which is interesting so side note i'm sure we've talked about this before the yellow ace is bo keevil uh Mm -hmm. a keldorian voiced by dave filoni um and then the only other note that i have on them is freya fenris the the red ace who is definitely uh seems to be a russian based in her Vocal attributes, <laughs> right. shall we say? Uh, yeah. Apparently, there is another Fenris in the Star Wars universe, Astrid Fenris, who uh, was not an associate of Han Solo, but had some interaction with Han Solo. It said, uh, I think what I read was basically like three decades earlier. And then, mm-hmm. you know, I read some speculation online. It was basically like, there is probably some connection between these two characters because why else would Disney have their names the same? You know, right. it's like you see Jabba the Hutt and you see another somebody the Hutt later. You're like, mm-hmm. ah, of course, you know, yeah. the Hutt's, They're gonna know the Hutt's a Hutt's yeah. a Hutt's a Hutt, right? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's what I got there. Um nice. What do we got next? Later we have Hype Faison being disappeared. Um, did that take you by surprise at all? No. Not at okay. all. No, no. Um, yeah. Uh, in talking about Hype and Aunt Z disappearing, mm-hmm. I was extremely bothered by... Uh, we get a whole scene of Taz and or T- Tam and Kaz and Tora talking mm-hmm. about where Hype could have been, and then Tora and Kaz want to go find him, and then we just cut to the shipping container where they're at. Um, okay, speaking of the shipping container, we have the four beans inside. Yeah. I totally expected it to be like packed full with like twenty, thirty. 40, 50 people. Right. Right. Yeah. Not four. Right. Um, I did like the little comic moments where Aunt Z is like trying to look out the, there's like some slits near the top where they can mm-hmm. see out, but she's not tall enough. So she's just stepping all over hype phase on. You can hear yeah. like his bones cracking, <laughs> not his yeah. bones, but his joints cracking. And, yeah. uh, and she's a much bigger character. She's, than she's a large lady, and right. Hype Faison is a, a small uh, Rodian. And, yep. you know, he's making comments like, that that was my back. Pretty sure you just broke my back. And she's like, shut yeah. up. You know, just, uh, I thought it was great. She's telling him, shut up. She's do, doing what she's right. doing. And yeah, the reason. Yeah, Donald Faison's acting for all of that is super good. Like, I, I wish he was on, on the show. Yeah. I wish he was on this show more often because he is so uh, the the characteristics come through in his vocal performance for sure. And I agree. I enjoyed those little moments. I wish um, he was on this show. If you know what I mean. <laughs> right. Um, but anyway, <laughs> carry on. But yeah, no, I was very bothered by that, that structure of, uh, Let's set up a mystery and let's just fucking answer this mystery right now. You know. Yeah, well, that being said, let's talk about the reveal of uh Doza talking to Yeager. How'd you feel right. about that one? Not surprised at all either. Jesus. Like it just 
Yeah, I was like, like the door opens and I'm just like, okay, like sure, great. When it happened, I was like, what the fuck? I mean, we already know they had a relationship. Like, yeah, Dora. I guess so. uh, why am I messing up with names? Doza and Yeager. Uh, like we already know there's an established relationship there. So for Doza to go to Yeager for help did not surprise me in the least. Okay. So that leads yeah. me to a different question, which uh, is probably off topic from what mm-hmm. we have been talking about. But um, uh, Kaz and Tora go on their little covert mission to find mm-hmm. hype, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Aunt Z has kicked the first order out of her bar. The two sneak off, and then when they when they get back to the repair shop, like Tam and Niku are just working on the fireball, just like right. doing whatever. Um, I guess they needed to be there to have like a secondary confrontation or something, but uh, it just kind of seems odd. And then we get the joke of. Of Kaz being like, yeah, we were planning a celebration, and Iku just goes nuts with it, like right. super happy about a celebration. Um, but He's ready for some food. Every time he said celebration, all I could think of was like Star Wars Celebration Chicago, which is like two months away, a month months, and a yeah. half away. I was like, yeah. man, that's the only thing I could think of, Star Wars Celebration. <laughs> and then I was like we are probably going to get some information about maybe season two of this, of this show at celebration. And now I'm excited. So season two and probably clone wars all in one. Ooh, very, very true. Yeah. Um, what about the plan? I think the last thing that I have to talk about, uh, would be Kaz's plan to steal the ship as opposed to set the prisoners free. Um, I thought it was when when he said no, you guys have to board the ship. I was like, "What the fuck is he doing? Is he gonna like give them some sort of communicator so they can like let him know where they are and then he can go and free them later?" It's kind of what I expected, um, but he's like, "No, we're gonna steal the ship." Right. Tell me, tell me your thoughts on this. <sighs> This, it, the reasoning makes sense, you know. Okay. Like, don't have prisoners disappear because then they know that somebody in the classes is helping them. So it oh, it will only get people in more danger. You know, like that makes sense. Um, I still think there are a lot of problems with the plan as it plays out. Right. But I think the idea is more so that they get away without setting the alarms off immediately. Like, there's there's a little bit of a delay before people will notice that the transport isn't actually occupied by uh, stormtroopers. Well, there, there are two troopers on the transport. Anzi picks him up, carries him up the ramp, and dumps him on the ground. Mm-hmm. Uh, at that point, I was like, please have Aunt Z, like, pop out with a fucking Stormtrooper helmet on and, like, the shoulder pads on or something and be <laughs> like, all right, now I'm undercover. I was right. really, really hoping that some, some corny situation like that would happen, which it didn't. Nope. Um, but, yeah, Hype or uh, Kaz is like, hey, can you fly this? And Hype's like, I can fly anything. And they fly off. Um on Z gives the destination of Takodana, which mm-hmm. leads me to another question. So the last episode, right, was one day before the beginning of The Force Awakens. Yeah. So this is relatively quickly after that, maybe. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering if the time that they arrive on Takodana lines up with the time that Han Solo, Chewie, Ray, Finn arrive on Takodana, 
and yeah. that they are simultaneously there, or if they're going to arrive on Takodana and Maz Kanata's castle is going to be blown the fuck up, right? I, I still feel like this is beating the events of Force Awakens just by a hair. Just by a hair. Yeah. So like, you don't think like we've a fallen behind just a little bit? No, I still think we're we're concurrent maybe with um like I still think there's some even even though Poe is headed to Jakku, I don't think we get to the scene with um Max von Sydow. I forget his character's name. Mm-hmm. Um I I think there's a little bit of time between Poe's arrival and that actual scene still. You know, I don't think he finds him right away. Like I don't think he just shows up on Jakku and knows to get right to him, but I have no real evidence for that, you know. I kind of assume that he did. Like and, that's the mission. Like think about the opening crawl of the Force Awakens. Uh-huh. Leia has sent her most trusted pilot on a mission to Jakku for yada, yada, yada. Like, she sent him there. That is true. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's possible. But all the same, it still feels... I still feel like we have just a little bit more time, even if by the matter of, like, a day or two. Yeah, right. I don't know. I'm questioning it. And by the way, the name you're looking for is Lor Santeca. That's right. Yep. Yeah. That's because Max von Sido sounds like a fucking Star Wars name. Right. Yeah. Like that is just a badass name. So, uh, but you know, I, I'm curious I, to see if we'll get more tie-ins to Force Awaken. Um, at least just more tie-ins to explain time frame such as what we're discussing, right? Um, I think that we will. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we're going to hear from Aunt Z or Hype again, though. Okay. My next my next question was, are we going to see anything on Takodana? Um, not, I don't think so in this show unless Kaz himself goes. Not even like Kaz uh, talking via hollow to aunt Z or like a message from aunt Z that's like, Hey, we arrived and, uh, my contacts fucking home base house bar, everything was blown the fuck up. And, uh, we're going to have to figure something else out. Uh, hopefully the first order is not onto us because, uh, one, the first order. Yeah. Isn't going to, I guess, didn't realize that the prisoners didn't steal the ship yet but they're gonna figure it out pretty quickly Mm -hmm. yes yeah you know what i mean i agree with that yeah but i don't i don't think they'll be able to track them if they can probably track their own ships yeah that is true um they'll probably jettison the ship hopefully if they're smart but yeah i don't i honestly don't think we're gonna hear from at z at least for this season okay i could be wrong i but get, my prediction is hype and Aunt Z are done for the season. Okay. And um Okay. That's all <laughs> I, that's all I got about Takodana. So really the only thing we got yeah. left is is the conclusion of this episode when when Kaz runs back in to talk to Yeager and uh Pyre and the rest of the first order are there. Not the rest of them literally if you were Niku. But a crew of stormtroopers yeah. yeah uh to arrest everybody mm-hmm. so do you think that they know that Kaz went on this clandestine operation no it's going to be for something different does it have I don't know what but it's not going to be for what just expired in this episode does it have to do with doza talking to eager and then uh doza says hey i found your snitch it's these guys it's eager and his crew mm, is he going I to don't... be you know a, a double crosser to try to save like doza? him and his daughter yeah no i don't think so 
like, hey, Pyre, I'll give you, I'll give you the guys. Uh, these are your spies. Get them out of here. Now you have no, no other need to be on, on my no. platform. I don't I don't see a, a Lando situation here, should we say. Okay. Um I don't see a Lando situation. It's going to be something weird. You know, like it the only thing that throws me off is that Pyre himself is there. Uh-huh. I but I don't I don't think it's door again, Doza related. Um You just want to watch Dora the Explorer? Is that I what I really do do want to watch Dora, man? Like, Let's. We'll just change uh, this. This is the last episode of Resistance that we're gonna review, and after this, we're gonna be watching yeah. Dora, Dora, Dora the Explorer. And then by the end of this podcast, we'll be all speaking basic Spanish. See. <laughs> <Si. laughs> and then we're gonna leave more awkward pauses for you to respond. <laughs> Do you see where on the map we should go? Don't get me started on the map. <laughs> I like the map, <laughs> but um, no, I yeah, I I don't, I don't, I don't see it being Doza related. It's it's gonna be something funky. It's gonna be something odd. Um, do you think it'll I'm, be? Do you think it'll be Tam? Do you think Tam tournament? Ooh, yes. Because I don't, I don't remember specifically if Tam was there. But even if she was, Tam was there. Tam, so all, so Tam, Niku, um, and Yeager are there, and then Kaz walks in with CB twenty three. Um, Tam does have a moment where when Kaz and Tora uh, run off to go sneak to the docks, Tam says something funny is happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and something she does something have, has a foot. Right. And she has like this very serious look. And she does does she say something else where she's like she'll she's gonna figure it out or something like that? I don't remember specifically, but uh But yeah, she definitely has a moment where she just looks even more angry than usual somehow. Um so that is a good possibility that Tam is behind this. Yeah, um, Again, because I am placing her in full deplorable category. Right. <laughs> like, I, I'm, I will double down on that phrase, that terminology. Uh-huh. Um, she she is a essentially a, a Nazi sympathizer in the universe of the show, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, or... Yeah, she, she she really is like this weird character that is like I I I uh, she she's not an awful character, but she is just missing big things that are happening right in front of her, and it that to me is very distressing. You know what's interesting is in the first mm-hmm. probably the third of this season, mm-hmm. uh. We liked Tam. Yeah, Tam was fine. She was cool. And then, and then she literally became a Nazi sympathizer. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think I would like to more equate her to like a uh, like a neo Nazi skinhead sympathizer because I feel Is like that in, any better. <laughs> like... Well, no, no. I just, um, I'm just trying to be more specific because kind of in right. this analogy, like the Empire were the Nazis, and then. Mm-hmm the first order are like the neo Nazis that are like taking it like to the next level. And, uh, she's like, well, my dad had to work for the Nazis or my grandpa had to work for the Nazis to put food on the table. And, but he wasn't a bad guy. So like these people probably aren't bad either. They're just doing their job. And the next thing you know, Tam is carrying a tiki torch. (laughs) It <laughs> probably makes it actually worse. Right. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, ana- analogies aside, uh, the thought didn't come to me until we were, until we were talking about this, but I, I think there is a potential for Tam to have gone to a first order officer and said, Hey, yeah. I think, I think Kaz is up to something funky. And I think that, 
years in on it, and Niku is just a poor innocent bystander that's just accepting his fate no matter what it is and yeah. and kind of happy to be along for the ride of life you know uh so i don't so far the show hasn't gone like this episode ends the next one starts immediately mm-hmm. vis-a-vis the force awakens and the last jedi um but I know the last two episodes of the show are like something part one and something part two. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that next week's is whatever is before that, right? Yeah. Does that sound so correct? It's, yeah. Yeah. So it's the uh, third to last episode. Yep. It looks uh, like next week is Descent. Mm-hmm. And then after Descent, we have No Escape Part 1 and then No Escape Part 2. So we got three more weeks of the show. Um, So I still feel like next week we're going to jump. We're going to have another little time jump where they are just in jail. Right. Yeah, it's interesting that we're going to have an entire... uh, We're going to have an entire week of uh, having been arrested to... Two episodes titled No Escape. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, that's cool, in my opinion. But, um, I don't know. That yeah, raises the, the, more... The, the, the Tam The Tam explanation is the best by far. Um, it, it just gives me so many more questions. Right. But, I mean, at this point, it really is fitting for her character, so... That's that's why I see that. I think um, I agree with that, and and uh, if that is the case, and I'd, like I said, you know, maybe we'll find out next week. But if that is the case, then I am happy with the way that her character has progressed because slowly over the last many weeks, we've been, you know, we went from man, Cam is awesome, Tam, Cam, Tam. Now I'm I'm pulling a Lorenzo. <laughs> None of the uh, names are working today, man. <laughs> We went from Tam is awesome, we love her character, to uh, we don't really understand what's going on with her, to she's definitely doing this, to Lorenzo calling her a Nazi sympathizer, to a projected uh, outcome of she's the reason behind Yeager and crew being arrested. Uh, So that'll definitely be interesting to see next week. Why don't we get into? Why don't we just wrap this up? Yeah. Uh, thumbs up, thumbs down. I'm still gonna force you to do a one word review of this one. Yeah, and uh, I'll have you start with a thumbs up, thumbs down. Let's let's have you start. I give this one a thumbs up, man. Like a solid mm-hmm. thumbs up. Okay. I I really really like this episode, and uh, mm-hmm. last week I think I said that was the best episode of the series, and I think this is the best episode of the series this week. Um, I really feel like this is, this is where the show should have been 15 episodes ago. Right. Um, and I know you have a question, a uh, second question for me, but I'm going to let you give your thumbs up, thumbs down. I agree with you that this is where the show should have been 15 episodes ago okay. from a story standpoint. Uh, huh. I do, however, still think that this is a sloppy episode. Okay. And my thumb goes down. Okay. Now, and sorry, go ahead. So, the the story is there, and I'm really excited about all of that. But there are so many storytelling issues here. There are so many progression issues that I really just found this a mess. Um, the progress, like I mentioned it during our conversation, the setup of a mystery only to have that immediately deflated. Okay. Um, also the idea that aunt Z knows, uh, somebody on Taco Donna, Mm -hmm. as she says, but there isn't a lot, like we don't know anything about aunt Z. We've barely gotten to know her. We just know her as the barkeep that has some attitude, but we never got to know her background. We didn't know anything. So for them to just kind of drop that, like there was no planting of that information to 
I mean, maybe it's just the fact. Maybe it's just the fact that uh, she's a barkeep with an attitude, and uh, uh, another we do know of another barkeep with an attitude. Like maybe, right. you know, they're industry people, and they go to, uh, they go not even to conferences, but you know, like industry people hang out. You know, right? Restaurant, different restaurant owners do know each other. Maybe they yeah. used to work together. <laughs> a long time ago, I don't know. Like they would meet at like restauranters, like conventions or something. Like, I yeah, I'm hesitant to go that far because I don't know that uh, Aunt Z is that old. But you know, it's like if you have if you got a watering hole in the old west, and uh, somebody else has a watering hole, and uh, your competitors, so so you learn about each other. Right. I'm I'm reaching here, but. I'm just saying, maybe. <laughs> yeah, so, but anyways, yeah. So the story is where it needs to be. It's just the the actual writing of how we get through this is pretty emblematic of my problem with this show overall. Okay. Uh, right. So it's... That's, that's yeah. really funny because that leads me into what my one-word review is, which is surprising. Uh-huh. Like... This episode just kind of surprised me, like, overall. And then, like, every time I thought I knew what was going on, like, there was, like, a little jump in something and, like, something else happened. And I was like, oh, clearly it's going to be this. And I was like, nope, that wasn't it. Clearly it's going to be this. Nope, that wasn't it. Like, when uh, when Kaz and Tora were going to sneak into the ah, they're not even sneaking into the high tower. I don't know where the fuck they're sneaking into. Uh, but anyway, they see they this. They were gr- sneaking to the tower. No, I thought they were already in the tower. No, because. Oh, that's Tora right. Because they were going to, to Hype's. To Hype's ship, which is yeah. in the tower. Because Tora says that the tower is on lockdown. Yes, you are correct. Yeah. Uh, so they see this droid, like, push a delivery up to, you know, the elevator or whatever. Stop mm-hmm. by some first order troopers and uh, then let through. So Kaz is like, I totally know what we're going to do. And then you see a, 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 a fucking hover sled of boxes like float up to the thing. And I'm like, okay, CB 23 is there pushing this deal. And uh, CB 23 gets stopped by some first order troopers. And uh, they're like, oh, this is a, an unscheduled delivery. We need to open this. And I was like, fuck, they're going to find Kaz and Tora inside. But nope, it's the little fish frog food things that I couldn't remember mm-hmm. the name of. Korgs right, or I, something like that. Yeah, that sounds right. Something like that. And Kaz had the foresight to just put a bunch of these things in there to jump out and essentially attack the troopers to distract them and then they just walk into the elevator and I was like god damn it like <laughs> that's a, that's a way better idea than I had I guess because I thought of the obvious thing which they would have got caught at um so before we started recording like earlier today I texted Lorenzo and I said god damn this show and uh, I mistakenly did that before he watched the episode <laughs> and he sent me a couple of questions and I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna like, sorry, didn't, didn't know you didn't see the show. <laughs> and the reason that I sent that is because one, like, this is really where I feel the show should have been like episode three or four. Right. right yeah. But then also like, God damn this show, because this specific episode Every time I thought I knew what was going on, I was not correct. And then in the end, when Kaz like runs in to talk to Yeager, everybody gets arrested. I was like, what the fuck? Like, goddamn this show. So yeah, surprising. That's what I got. Yeah. See, I didn't I did not have that reaction. And at it all. might be because I texted you and said, God damn this show. Right, because well, Partly, but really, it's just, the, again, like I said, the structure of this episode only detracted from these left turns. Mm-hmm. So, it's just because 
even even surprises have to be earned and laid out in some fashion you know um the, this is why deus ex machinas bother people right it's not mm-hmm. because it's a plot convenience it's more that we didn't have information planted to just make us feel comfortable with the idea that something is happening right um so like with all of these like little reveals and little surprises they're kind of just peppered through the script but they don't amount to anything per se right i i will agree that they don't necessarily amount to anything but uh it was fun enough for me that i was like surely because you know a lot of the show has been predictable up until this point and this Mm. one this episode for me it just wasn't does that make sense? I yeah. Yeah, I I I understand that. Um like e- even if there was something I didn't see coming, I just still didn't have a didn't reaction care. to it. Yeah, I just didn't care. Like the sh- the show still hasn't yeah, this is where we should have been in episode 15 or uh, sorry, in episode 3, but we're like 15 episodes beyond that. So it is true. It still it still has to work for me to care. Right? Like that's that's kind of the underlying issue here. Um so okay. this this is looking at it big picture, you know, overall mm-hmm. like I can't get into this show despite the story finally ramping up here, right? But even just looking and judging on this episode on its own, like I said, uh, my one word review would be sloppy. Okay. And because of its sloppiness, because of the way the story just kind of has random scenes, like the weird aside with hype goes on for far too long. Um, I will. I'll agree with that. Yeah. Like it. Like we. It we see the whole boot going on to the ship and then hype saying like so many things. And then we have a long scene where they discuss about him disappearing. Right. Like it, it just needed to be tightened up and moved along. Um, and like, yeah, there's no suspense, no tension. And then like the fight scene towards the end where they're all fighting the, stormtroopers on the dock just happens so haphazardly and it's just like this other silly fight that just kind of conveniently happens right so that's kind of why i just sat back i like taking notes but i was just kind of blankly staring at the screen you know (laughs) so speaking of that end fight um... uh uh-huh how did you feel about Tora shooting a trooper? Even though, like, the blaster was on stun, uh, one, do you think that she knew that it was? And two, do you think that this shows, like, a growth of character in her to to be defined enough to actually fire arms on a First Order trooper? Like, that takes some commitment. I agree, and that's a that's a good question. Um, I never got the sense that she was like she definitely wasn't on the Tam end of the spectrum per se, mm-hmm. right? But I think at least in this episode she does have some sense of agency where she gets pissed off enough that hype is missing. Yeah, for sure. I mean, right? she is the catalyst for all, for most of what uh, all of this sneaking around is. Right, for sure. Um, so for her to shoot, I, yeah, I, 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 I don't think she knew it was set on stun per se. Um, but it doesn't surprise me either that she pulls the trigger. Mm. Right. I think she was ready to shoot to kill. I would not disagree with you there. Um, but like I said, she would not talk to Kaz, uh, being that Kaz and Tam have made their opinions 
well known mm-hmm. out loud in Aunt Z's can- cantina or bar or whatever you want to call it. Um, that Tora knows that in going to Kaz, what kind of age she will be getting, mm-hmm. right? Okay. Versus was it last week or the week before where they try to stop Tam from going along, but she just fucking inserts herself in the situation. And then when the stormtrooper appears knocked out, Tam then like freaks the fuck out. Right. So this is why Tora trusts Kaz for this situation. Yeah. That was, that was two weeks ago with the new trooper. Right. Right. So, so this again is, why I think it's really funny that Tam is super butthurt that she's not included in all of the fun events that are going on. But yeah, right. the fact that that was two episodes ago, like, again, you should know that nobody wants you at the fucking birthday party, okay? Like, I'm sorry. If you're not invited to the birthday party, take that as a fucking sign that nobody likes your fucking ass. Like, Doesn't matter what like, kind of present you buy. Nobody wants right. you there. Nobody fucking wants you there. I'm sorry. Yo. Know? So. <laughs> oh. Either that or they really like your present, but you're the smelly kid and you just bring the whole fucking party down. But even then, it's just like. Uh, just. It, it's so odd that she gets suspicious, but really at the end of the day. Uh, yeah. At the end of the day. Just, she needs to stop blaming external forces and just maybe take a hard look at herself. And yeah, yeah I think she's got too much of a chip on her shoulder to do that. But uh, I got one more question for you, mm-hmm. and uh, then we can close this thing out. Uh, I guess it's a double question: Are we going to see? Phasma next episode or in the two part finale and uh, will Yeager's crew that has been arrested be taken off planet I don't ooh that's a good question I think we'll see Phasma at some point before seasons end mm-hmm. um, the off planet I'm not sure I don't I don't think they'll be taken off planet okay um I think they'll remain on the Colossus. I feel like in the preview to this, we saw some type of mission or something going on and something that looked more like a First Order base than uh, the Colossus. Preview for this episode? Or no, not this one? episode. This this season in oh, general. This series? Mm-hmm. I mean, we've already gotten a few off-planet episodes, so I I don't know what you're referring to because, like, p- potentially we might have already seen. It's not, you know. Right. So, yeah. Like, we've already gotten, like, Phasma footage here and there, you know. Um, okay. So, I, I feel like it would be weird to not bring Phasma in at least one more time, but I wouldn't be surprised, though, also if it's just Commander Pyre from here on out running the show. Okay. Um, like for sure, I'd be very surprised if we heard from Poe again, but bef- at least at some point throughout the rest of the show, I feel like we'll hear from him at some point. Yeah. I think Poe's um, done for season one. Yeah. I, I feel like there's still a gap somewhere in force awakens where Ray and Finn are doing their thing. And then Poe will probably hologram in at some point, maybe. This season, right. I maybe potentially. Uh, I don't that think or so. Leia. I that think or Leia. Leia maybe, but I think mm. I think Poe has a force to awaken, and uh, I don't think I don't think we're gonna I don't think we're gonna hear from him. Uh, Phasma. Again, Star Wars is good yes. at finding gaps. Star Wars is really good at like figuring out where the gaps are. <laughs> no, he goes to fucking Jakku, and then he goes on the run, and then he is tortured by Kylo Ren and then kind of rescued by Finn and then crash lands. And like, what's he going to do? Wake up in the fucking desert because he got ejected out of a tie fighter. And he's going to be like, I need to talk to Kazuda Zioni. No, 
Not going to happen. Well, like, where is he in that in- interim? He's with Leia, right? Kaz or Poe? No, Poe. Because, like, Finn is on his adventure with Rey, and then they get reunited later. And that's uh, when, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Because Finn is it. like, oh, I thought you got, like, eaten by the sand creature thing, you know. He's like, oh, man, I'm, I thought you were gone, too. I looked for you, and I didn't see you anywhere. That is the gap I'm talking about. Again, I say goddamn this show. That's the gap. That's the gap where so. they Poe will find himself at helping in some capacity. I, I will be surprised, but I think there's room for more Poe. So... Maybe next week's episode is just called Decent, not Descent. <laughs> Don't know. Is that a hope? Is that a... <laughs> yeah, it's like not quite a hope, but you know, it's decent. Right. So anyways, yeah, uh, if if nothing else to be said, let's just... <sighs> That's all I got, man. Uh, right. So we, as always, want to give a thanks to Lindsay at Strange Fantasy Music. She put together the jingle at the beginning and end. Uh, Kevin Warren at They Call Me K Dub on Twitter uh, designed our cover art. If you need, want to reach out to us, you can reach out at email. That's not the nerds podcast at gmail dot com. Kevin here is in charge of our Twitter at not the nerds. I occasionally update our Facebook at not the nerds podcast. There, uh, we are available on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play. Uh, also, audio goes on to YouTube. So wherever you're listening, please subscribe, give us a review, rating, all that goodness. Until yeah, next send time. Me your, yeah. Send me your cell phone number, and I will call you <laughs> and uh, replay this entire episode in your voicemail, and you can listen to it that way. That's a dangerous proposition. Good, jo- <laughs> Good luck, sir. Uh, but that said, I've been Lorenzo Fon. Kevin Hort here. These aren't the nerds you're looking for. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.